In this video, I'll be showing you how you can create your own high quality film grain. And I'm not talking about some digital noise garbage that create in editing software, but actual film grain that we extract from a real film. Let me show you the process. So what you'll need is a film camera, a film roll. We used a ASA 400 film. That's like equivalent to 400 ISO in digital terms, and we'll give you some nice grain. Then you'll obviously need a computer and a scanner. And then one last thing, don't forget to bring your good mood. This is something we say in Iceland, and I kind of just realized while I'm here talking to you with a camera that uh, this probably doesn't translate that well over to English. Start by prepping your film camera, then what you want to do is to photograph a medium grey background. We used our computer screens and then we just used Photoshop to create those grey backgrounds. A little pro tip here is that you can actually first use your digital camera to find the correct exposure. That way, once you have the you know correct settings, it's so easy to dial them in on your film camera. When you're ready, <laughs> you've done all these steps that I talked about, you then want to photograph the grey background. Here you just want to make sure that you shoot it out of focus, that way you will get an even grey film. Magnus, why exactly are we photographing it on a grey background? So basically we need a clean grey frame because we're using the grain as overlay in the editing software. That way we're only seeing the grain and the colours and the contrast won't be affected. Whoa. Once you hear that sound, it's time to develop the film, and in all honesty, this step here can take a little time, simply because it requires, you know, decent amount of waiting. So I just picked up the film from the uh, developing guy. I still don't know what you call it, developer, developing guy. Google, Google Translate didn't help me a lot. But anyways, I'm on my way to Magnus for the next step of the, you know, making the film grain, which is to scan in everything. We're gonna scan it in to the computer, you know? So this process right here is really straightforward. You're basically just scanning the films to get them into digital formats. Now, if you've never used a scanner in your life, no problem, I got you back in the description. I'll leave links to videos that can help you learn how to do this. But basically just make sure to keep everything as clean as you possibly can. Use the white gloves, they don't only look sick, but they also eliminate smudge. And you don't want that smudge on your beautiful film grain that you're creating. Also make sure that the scanning software that you use doesn't have any auto corrections to them tones you don't really want that either. This is basically the process and once you are finished, it is time for the next step. Which is the post process. You see, once you've scanned the film, you get this blue file that you see here and you need to like prepare it in a way so only the grain will affect the video. <laughs> Let me put the camera down here for a second. Now to be able to achieve Exactly that, we use a Photoshop. And in all honesty, this is quite complicated. And when we were um, like preparing this video that you're watching here, we weren't quite sure how to package this step in a way that is like fun and engaging to watch because there are a whole lot of steps. We're talking frequency separations and a lot of other things. And also it's different whether you want to just get the film grain that you can see here, that is a beautiful looking film grain, or if you want to extract just the dust. You see, see now, you see these dust particles all here. And maybe you want to do both of them at the same time. And you know, in order for us to be able to explain this like properly, we really need like an in-depth step-by-step Photoshop tutorial, because if you're like a Photoshop idiot like myself, that's exactly what you're gonna need. So we decided to do exactly that. In the description, you can find two different videos where Mike Nuss like really breaks this down super simply, how to prepare the files so only the grain will affect the video or photo, whatever it is when you're creating. Now I'm just assuming that you watch that, or simply that you just enjoy hanging out with us. And we can go on to the next step. I don't know why I'm pointing in that direction. All right, my friends, in this step of the process, we'll be creating the video and photo overlays out of the processed images. And you know, let's just start with the photography ones because it's really, really straightforward. You basically just have to go through your static pictures, pick the ones that you like the most. And then my biggest tip here would definitely be to organize them neatly so it's easy for you to see what each file represents. And then if you want to create video overlay, the process is obviously a a little bit different because now you have to actually create the video out of your static pictures. The way you do this is by first dragging all the photos into your editing software. We personally use Premiere Pro. Then all you have to do is just to highlight all of the photos and change the speed of them to one. Basically you do this so each photo is only one frame. After this you place them onto the timeline, you create a sequence into your desired resolution and frame rate, and then all you have to do now is just to export it to ProRes for the maximum possible quality. Once you've finished with all of these steps, you're now left with real film grain that looks incredibly good. And in my opinion, film grain is just 
such a nice way to make your footies look a little bit more authentic, make it stand out. Also, if you're like me and you're a big fan of that film look, then film green is kind of essential step, you know, in the thing in making your footies a little bit more filmic and vintage or whatever you want to call it, you know. Plus, I mean, you can see here on the footage I'm throwing up, it just looks incredibly good. And once you have these files, you can really, you know, unrelease your creativity. You don't have to go all out to have like the most sickest film grain. You can also just add just a tiny bit and drag down the exposure quite a lot. So it's just like really subtle, but what it does, and this is what I'm a huge fan of, it just makes your footage a little bit softer, a little bit more filmic, and it's not as, you know, digital and sharp as digital cameras are these days, which I mean, I'm a huge fan of that look. One thing you can keep in mind is that you can of course get a little bit creative by mixing a few grains together. For instance, here you have a flicker effect, some dust and a clean grain, and by combining these and playing a little bit around with the opacity on each grain, you'll end up with something unique. I mean, the limit is just in your imagination. If you don't want to go through all of these steps yourself, or you simply just want to support me in Magnus, then we've actually made a film grain pack with over 20 different film grains. We talk, you know, some 35 millimeters, some 60 millimeters, some Super 8, a lot of these film dust particles, I like them a whole lot, and then some flicker effects and even some uh, more. And like in all honesty, I'm incredibly proud of this pack, and we've put so much time, effort, and work into it. I'm talking, you know, hand picking these grains out of hundreds and hundreds of photos, testing them, seeing what we like, changing it, and then doing that a lot of times, you know? And in the end, the results are like they're really good. I can honestly say that this is by far the best digital product that I've ever created, and the process has been extremely fun, and I'm very, very excited to finally be able to, you know, share it with you. So yeah, and also, a photograph pack. We also did a photograph pack as well. So if you want to buy the pack, just know that your support really means the world to me. It means, you know, that I'm able to push out these videos to you guys on a consistent basis, which is a dream come true and big thanks from that. Like from the bottom of my ice cold Icelandic heart, thank you. And if you don't want to buy the pack, buy the pack. <laughs> and if you don't want to buy the pack, no worries, my friend. The fact that you are watching, especially still watching here, smacking the like button on videos and then just interacting with me and this community of the building is also a huge support. I mean, it's just so humbling to know that all of you guys are watching and whenever I go on my YouTube channel, I see just how big this has gotten. It's, uh, I have no words for it. Like, thank you. Thank you so much. And I truly appreciate you.